Alright guys, so when we last left off in the last video, uh, we were talking about, I had mentioned data dependence. And basically what this means is that a change of the data's characteristics requires a change of the file's descriptions in all programs that access the file. So in order to change, and this triangle just means change here, the characteristics of the data, right? We have to change the file descriptions in all programs that access the file. So the change has to be made to all programs. Change made to all programs that access the data. Now you can see what the problem is here. If we have something that's data dependent, well, we're going to have to do a lot of changes, right? It's, instead of just running one change and being able to update it all. Now structural dependence, what is structural dependence? It's a cha it means that a change in file structure requires a change of the file's descriptions in all programs that access the file. So if we want to change the way a file is structured, we're going to have to chain, make a change again in, in, in all the programs that access the file, right, or the data in that case, as, as was the, the, you know, so we have data dependence, we have to change uh, the data, the file description. So basically, we have to make these changes that we want to make if we run these dependencies in all the files that access that data. Right, and now I kind of want to take a short break from that, and I want to kind of jump into sort of a conceptual design. So this is going to follow conceptual design, and I want to go over some terminology first. So we have the model, right, and the model is a description or analogy uh, used to visualize something that cannot be observed. Okay, so that's what a model is. Now, a data model is a plan or blueprint for a database design. Right? Then we have what's called the mini world, which is some part of the real world about which information will be stored in the database. Right, so maybe uh, for a bank it would be account info or th things of that nature. So basically, these are the concepts that we're working with here. Let me just, again, let me just clear some space here. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we'll jump back in. Basically, uh, we have the entity relationship model. And what that is, is it's a set of concepts and graphical symbols that can be used to create conceptual schemas. So in the original ER model, the relationship could have attributes, right? An entity class is a collection of entities that share common properties. And that's about uh, all the time we're going to have for this tutorial. So, see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.